Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to serve a file as an attachment using the ASP32 and the Arduino core. As target board I'm going to be using an ASP32 Fire Beetle board from DFROB. So the first thing we are going to need to do is uploading a file to our SPIFS file system of the ASP32 uh, so we can later serve it to a client which will be in our case a web browser. So in order to simplify our, uh, our life uh, we should use the Arduino with the SPIFS upload plugin, which is a, a, pl a plugin that I've covered in a previous tutorial that allows us uh, to upload files to the SPIFS file system, which means that when we run our code, uh, we can have already the files needed to serve uh, uploaded beforehand to our SPIFS file system. So basically, as you can see here, I have this option available under my tools menu. Uh, because I've already installed this plugin. So basically, this ASP32 sketch data upload allows me to upload files uh, to the SPIFS file system. And basically, the way to do it is just opening the sketch folder. Note that I've already saved it um, a, a sketch where we are going to analyze the code, but I've already saved it. And I can quickly navigate to this folder, to the folder of this sketch, by going to the sketch menu and clicking this option, so show sketch folder. As you can see here, it is opening, and in order for us to be able to upload files to the SPIFS file system, what we need to do is, inside the sketch folder, creating a folder called data, as you can see here. Oops, sorry, in here. And basically there we need to place all the content that we want to upload to the SPIFS file system. Basically, in my case, I've created a file called test underscore file, which is an HTML file that will be serving from our um, from our file uh, sorry from our http web server running on the sp32 so we can compare two situations one where we serve the file normally and the browser will get that file interpret the content the html content render it and, and show it to the user and the second option will be um downloading that file. In that case, the browser won't be inter interpreting the content and, and rendering it. It will instead uh, download it and save it locally. So basically, this is why we are testing this with an HTML file. So as I was saying, this file is called test underscore file. You can name it however you want, as long as in the code, uh, when loading the file from the SPIFS file system, you choose the correct uh, file path. And as you can see here, if we open, uh, this is a file, very simple file that has a, um, a message saying hello from file system. So we are not concerned here about how to write HTML. So this is just an example. You can put here whatever you want, some HTML content. For my case, I've just written this very simple string. So assuming that you have everything uh, in place and this file saved in your data folder, in order to upload it to your SPIS file system, you just need to go to this tools menu and click this option, ASP32 Sketch Data Upload. I'm not going to do it here because it takes a while and I've already uploaded this file from, uh, to my ASP32 SPIFS file system, but this is the way you do it in order to upload before you run the code. So basically I'm also going to uh, leave in the comments, sorry, in the video description, uh, a link to a video where I've explained a little bit more in more detail how to use this, um, this Arduino EDA um, tool. And if you go to the documentation of the tool, it will have there a detailed installation instruction, uh, which I recommend you to follow from there because it should be the most updated place where you can see um, how to install this plugin on your Arduino IDE. So other, other than that, I'm assuming that you have already done it and you have already uploaded the file uh, to your sp 32 piece file system. And now we are going to analyze the actual code that we will need in order to uh, set up an HTTP server on our sp 32 and then serve the file and we will serve, we will have two routes, one to serve the file regularly. So the browser will interpret its content and render it and another that will serve the file um, to be downloaded as an attachment. So, but before we go to that part, let's analyze so the, the beginning of the code. So basically we need all the library includes that uh, uh, will allow to connect the SP32 to a Wi-Fi network that will allow us to interact with the SPIFS file system so we can access the file in order to serve it. And then we will need this spsyncwebserver.edge library that will be used in order to set up the server. As we'll see below, it will uh, make to us available the class that will allow us to configure the server. 
So other than that, in terms of global variables, we'll need uh, the credentials of the Wi-Fi network. So you should uh, replace these placeholders here by the actual credentials of the Wi-Fi network um, that we are going to use in order to connect the SP32 uh, to that network. And then we are going to need an object of this class, a sync web server, uh, which is basically the class that becomes available by this library include, and we will use an object of this class in order to set up uh, the routes of our server and to start our server so it uh, begins receiving requests from clients. Note that the constructor of this class receives as input uh, the port where the server will be listening. We are going to use port 80 because it is the default HTTP port. Okay, moving on to the Arduino setup function. Uh, so basically, uh, the first thing we are going to do is opening a serial connection. We always do this in order uh, to be able to uh, print some content to the serial port. So this is always useful to have uh, available, especially on when testing uh, uh, when testing code. And then we are going to mount the SPIF file system because we always need to mount it uh, before we start interacting with it. After mounting the SPIF file system and assuming everything went well, because if it didn't, it should print to us a message and it should return because there's no point in trying to run this code if the SPIF file system did not mount correctly. So assuming that everything goes fine, we are going to try to connect our SP32 to the uh, Wi-Fi network, as you can see here, like we have been doing in previous tutorials. And at the end, we are going to print a local IP assigned to the SP32 so the client can uh, reach the server. In, in our case, the client will be a simple uh, web browser. Then what we are going to do is configuring the server routes as we uh, have also done before in other tutorials. So we need, we have our server object and we simply need to call the on method on our server object, passing as first input um, the route endpoint. In, uh, in this case, it will be the route that will be serving um, the, the file as attachment. So I've called it slash download and it will only listen to HTTP GET requests because basically the browser will be fetching uh, content, will be fetching a file, so this is the HTTP method that makes sense. And then we are going to pass a third parameter, a lambda function. This is the C++ lambda syntax that basically defines the route handling function which will be executed whenever a request is made to this route. So again, this is something that we have already covered in previous tutorials. And like we did before, there's this send method of our async web server request object that we can use to get back an answer to the client. What happens is that this is a, um, a method that is overloaded and it has uh, different signatures. And basically the one that we are going to be used will be very similar to the previous tutorial where we were serving a file. Uh, I'll, I will also leave a link uh, in the description of this video to that file where we saw uh, how to serve a file from the SPIS file system. But in this case, we are going to make use to, uh, of a fourth parameter that allows to set if this file should be interpreted uh, regularly by the browser or if it should be downloaded as an attachment. But we are going to, as a quick refresher, we are going to see um, step by step, uh, or in this case, argument by argument, what each argument of this send method means. So as first, uh, as first argument, we need to pass uh, an object of class FES, which is a class from the Arduino core that represents a file system. So our spiffs extern variable, the one that becomes available when we include the spiffs.edge library and allows us to, in to interact with the spiffs file system, it basically inherits from that uh, FES class. So basically, uh, we can pass here our spiffs extern variable that will be used under the hood by the um, by the async web server libraries in order to interact with the spa, uh, with the spiff file system, getting the file and serve it. So uh, this is the first argument. A second argument we need to pass um, the path of the file uh, in the file system. So basically, uh, it's the same. A name that we that we gave to the file test underscore file dot html and since the file was uh, uploaded from the data folder from the root of the data folder in terms of of uh, the spiff file system it will also be on the root of the spiff file system so basically this is the path that we need to use uh, 
This third parameter corresponds to the content type of the file uh, that we are serving, and in our case, we are serving a uh, text slash HTML file. This is the content type that we need to use because basically our, our file um, is, in HT is an HTML file. As for the last parameter, and this is an optional parameter, this is why uh, in previous tutorials we could just uh, use these three parameters and everything worked, because this one is an optional parameter, we don't need to pass it every time, so if we don't need it, we don't pass it and it will have a default value, but basically this is a boolean value indicating if the file should be uh, set as an attachment to be downloaded, in case it is true, Otherwise, if it is false, it should be just uh, interpreted by the browser and rendered. So basically, the default value is false, which is why every time uh, we call this send method just just with these three parameters, the, the default behavior will be uh, telling to the browser that this is a regular HTML file that should be interpreted and should be shown rendered to the user. In this case, since we are passing here the value true, basically we will be telling in the answer to our client, we will be telling that this file should be downloaded and saved locally and should be treated as an attachment and not as a file to be interpreted. So basically this is it. This is how we set a file to be downloaded instead of to be interpreted by the browser. And now just as a comparison, we are going to create another route that will basically um, be the default behavior that will tell to the browser that this is just a regular HTML file and it should be interpreted. So basically everything is the same except that now we are going to call this route slash interpret and this fourth parameter will be false instead which is the default value of this parameter uh, as I've already said but here we are setting it explicitly so basically this will tell uh, the browser that the file should be interpreted as HTML and should be shown to the user. After this point, the only thing missing to do is calling the begin method on our server object that will basically make sure that the server will start uh, and it will uh, listen to incoming HTTP requests from clients. So, just as a, another refresher, since this is an asynchronous solution, uh, an HTTP asynchronous web server, we don't need to periodically pull um, some object in order to handle incoming connections from clients. Everything is handled for us under the hood. These functions will be called implicitly for us whenever the requests uh, are sent to the server. So, this is why we can leave this main loop empty if we don't have any other computation to do. So this is it, very simple, uh, regarding what we have seen in the previous tutorial, we have this flexibility of making an, a file, um, an attachment, making that file downloadable by the browser, just by passing this additional flag with a value true. So I've already uploaded this code to my SP32, as you can see here. So uh, as soon as the code runs, uh, it starts connecting to the Wi-Fi network and when it finishes, it will print a local IP assigned uh, to the SP32. As you can see here, this is the local IP assigned to my SP32. So basically, when I'm trying to reach uh, my device, the HTTP server hosted by my device, uh, I should use this IP. So if I go to my web browser, I have already here, as you can see, the IP, and I'm reaching here this interpret endpoint. I'm going to run it again. And as you can see here, let me just open here the tools. This is in Portuguese, but basically it is it is the regular dev tools, and this part is already in English. So basically, uh, as you can see here, if I make a request, um, as you can see here, this is a regular request, and basically the browser responds um, with the HTML file and basically there's nothing here saying that it should be interpreted um, as an attachment so basically the browser uh, will just uh, get the HTML file uh, and render it, render it and display it to the user. On the other hand, we, if we do this and we reach this download endpoint as I'm going to do here, as you can see it downloaded here the file, a file called test um, file underscore HTML and if we go here to the request, as you can see here, there's this content disposition attachment, which basically tells to the browser uh, that the browser, instead of render this file, it should uh, download it and save it locally. So basically, the effect of setting the previous flag, the one that we have analyzed in the code, uh, the effect of setting it to true is basically making this content disposition header, uh, having the value attachment, which basically uh, will tell to the browser to download 
um, the file instead of interpret it like we have seen here because it, it, here it is basically telling the browser to interpret it uh, and display it in line and in this case it is telling it to, to download it as an attachment. So basically this is it, this is, it might be useful if you want for example um, to serve images from your file system and instead of them being displayed by the browser you want them to be downloadable or any other resource. So basically this gives us much more freedom in terms of what we can do uh, of the uh, in what regard to setting a web server on our SP32 and basically this illustrates how flexible um, this async uh, got ATP web server library uh, is. So that's it, very simple, thank you very much for watching, I uh, hope you have enjoyed this video.